anyway, uh, so I came back just to hear exactly how that influenced Dave and if, uh, if it, you know, all of a sudden made my stuff seem a little bit too sparse or naked mm -hmm. or whatever. But it worked out great. The first time we recorded, though, I'm mean, sorry to mention this before, we did a, a demo of a song called Headspace with Josh Abraham when we first were trying him out. And we went in and we did it the other way around where Dave put his guitars on and I put mine on. Um, and I really, you know, it just, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. It's a little bit more, um, I, I think I concentrate, I, I try a little harder when I'm all by myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what, uh, let's talk about some of the songs. I mean, uh, Superhuman, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that lick you do in the beginning, I mean, I, I hear kind of a, a, a sweet child of mine, kind of on acid kind of thing. <laughs> right. You know, that's what comes to my mind. I mean, does that... Does that resonate with you at all? I mean, when you were, you know that, you know that, you know that lick, you know how the, the, you the octaves it, and the, the, the it just, it. and the sound, I mean, that's so purely you, I mean. Well, that's cool. I, you know, that just, um, that came out of nowhere. It's, I, I think the Sweet Child of Mine thing um, pops up here and there because it's just sort of a, um, a single note style of mine. Exactly. It pops up a lot in guitar solos where I do this octave thing around a, a little melody, but it's, it exactly. comes and goes. Sweet Child of Mine probably would never have happened, i got to give Axel credit, if he hadn't um, recognized it as being great. I, I mean, that's how he, because I thought mm. it was a joke. Really? Yeah, I just was me sort of doing a lick, and then the chord changes underneath it gave it some... Yeah, yeah, some movement. Arena, yeah, some, yeah, some movement. And, uh, and then I still thought it was a joke, and Axel came in and started singing, and I hated that song all the way up until, like, uh, probably after the... Uh, 80, 88, 89, I hated that song all the way up until we were touring with Aerosmith and it was such a huge hit you couldn't ignore it. But So now <laughs> I still I still come up with things off the top of my head that are sort of some sort of repetition kind of thing mm -hmm. that somehow I'll end up that, that particular one, Superhuman, was just the first thing that popped in my head over their bass and drums, that heavy Oh like, really? Like, dumb, yeah, yeah. Dumb, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what the, that's where that came from. It's real spontaneous. Wow. Um, you mentioned you got no right, and you mentioned that's the first time you played acoustic guitar on the on, on this record. Yeah, the first and only time. Yeah, that was the only song that that I actually wrote on acoustic. Oh, you wrote that <laughs> yeah, on acoustic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. So then, obviously, writing on acoustic, you would you would hear it. Uh, you, you want acoustic on the record since yeah you know. I, well, I, I mean well, I, uh, the demo that we did we recorded it with a Les Paul that has a um, a piezo pick in it, pick up in it yeah, and it sounded really that. interesting that way and uh, so when I went in the studio the first time we recorded that song twice the first time I just did it with an acoustic and then the second time we went back to record it I did it with an acoustic with a microphone and a piezo at the same time so it didn't sound like one thing about electrics when you uh, electric acoustics is they have a tendency to have a, a very synthetic sound yep. so we sort of mixed it up and made it a little bit more pure mm -hmm. but it's a good guitar sound mm -hmm. interesting um, talk a little bit about your soloing um, your solos, Adam was telling me, are put on uh, before the vocal goes on? Yeah, usually. usually. Is that kind of, I mean, do most guys do it that way? or would, would I, they... I, You know what, I started doing, however I record, I sort of went in, it's, it's weird, I didn't have much experience, but when we did the Appetite for Destruction record, that was really the first record I ever made, um, and I sort of had it mapped out how each part would go. And I never read any books on it or anything like that. But also, I'm with my clink, who's like, okay, so we got the rhythm mm -hmm. track, now how do you want to do your, or we got the scratch tracks, how do you want to do this? So I'm going to put my guitars down, then we'll do the harmony parts, then we'll do the guitar solos. And all this because back then, Axel never sang hardly like a rehearsal or anything like that. So the band just played as a band all the time without vocals in mind. Really. I see. So then we knew that Axel would put the vocals on. We didn't even know how half of them were going to really turn out. We knew how the song sounded live, but uh -huh. that was it. Oh, wow. So, so it was interesting. But at this point now, we always rehearse like a, um, uh, really hard to make sure that, that we know the material without vocals. Mm -hmm. So that we don't mm -hmm. use that as a crutch, mm -hmm. but it's nice to have vocals sometimes if you need it for fucking um, certain dynamics that maybe you might sort of the ebb and flow of the song sort of going with the vocals and the right. way that the band plays. So mm -hmm. we try and get some scratch vocals in there, which Scott does do. So we've had vocals beforehand, but 
I do the solo, and then the real vocals come on after. I see. And are your solos <coughs> typically, I mean, um, Adam was mentioned that, that you really come in, you have a pretty good idea, I guess, from rehearsals of, of what your solo is going to be, as opposed to coming in and just... The first, this, this record was a little bit different in that respect than other ones because we did this one so fast. We wrote this material really quickly. What happens is is uh, we find the solo section, either there's something singing in my head that's mel melodic or whatever that comes right away, or the first spontaneous take, that you know, the first run at, at the solo, there's mm -hmm. something in there as, as a structure, I'll go back and try it and see if put one end connected to the end sometimes. On this record though, like there's a song called uh, Sucker Train Blues, I told you that, Sucker Train Blues, which has a solo that was just a one take whammy bar <laughs> solo. Uh -huh. um, there's a few songs on this record that don't have any real um, repeat, like a solo that I had planned out. Mm -hmm. you know, I, like, you, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I'll play a song uh, enough times to where I always feel the same exact thing right. every time we get to the solo section. Right. Um, and that was pretty much the case with this, but I never actually got went out and, and, and played it live and fucking I really, understand. you know, got it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, there's a lot of improvising on this. I understand. Record. So I mean, I mean, I mean, I thought the solo on Spectacle was, was great. And that's pretty made up on the spot. It is. Too. It is. Wow. Um, that was definitely made up on the spot because I had was. no idea what I was going to do. When I, that was actually the first song that we recorded guitars on. And it I, was. I got to the studio. Um, Josh had his own studio, and I got there. And one thing is a standard with me. I like to play in the control room. Um, if I'm going to do overdubs, and I hate headphones, stand in the control room with huge speakers and crank it and play like it's in a live situation. You do. And I got there, and he had these two little Yamahas, and that was it. And I was like, have you ever, I mean, things, you know, I've, it just blew my mind. It's like, how can you um, recreate or, or a, a, a rock and roll environment with, with just these little NS10s? And so the, that's the, how we started the first few days until we managed to, to lease out some, some, some big uh, monitors. So wow. it was like little NS10s cranked as far as they could go. And I was also... All of a sudden, for some strange reason, I took a tiny little Fender, one of these little guys, about this big, mm -hmm. and a distortion box, and that's what the solo was done on. Oh, really? Which was like way left field for me. I was just wow. You know, but I remember I did that solo really fast one night, and then like it was really fast, and I heard it the next morning. I said it just sounds too spastic, and I went back and came up with the sort of way it is now. You did. Yeah. What about Slither? I mean, as a first single, I mean, you know, are you trying to relate anything? Here I am slash in kind of 2004, and here's where I am as a player. And I mean, do you think about that at all because it is a first single? Or is that after the fact that you play it, then they, the record comes No, no, no. We, we, we just thought that it was the most indicative song of the band, like an mm. easy all-encompassing shot of it because mm -hmm. there's something different about all the songs that might throw you for a loop you know like obviously you don't want to have a slow song for the first one like right. a little slow song mm -hmm. and then you know some of the songs were so fast and the, the subject matter was so aggressive we thought yeah. maybe not that and so we had like three songs that were real simple velvet revolver songs and mm -hmm. we narrowed it down to that one so I mean, it has a guitar solo in it. It has our sound to it. It's got vocal, uh, Scott's vocal sound, and it sounds pretty much like. Uh, it was also one of the first songs that we wrote, and we uh, played it at the El Rey, and so it's been on the internet, a live version of I it's see. on the internet. So we figured, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. so that's yeah. that was basically. You know, I've never had that kind of feeling of like, okay, here I am at this particular point, yeah. and here it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so at the end of the day, when you sit and you listen to contraband, I mean, is is that is that who you are? I mean, is that this record that you're kind of hearing and this music and these riffs and is that like this this perfect? Well, that's what's going machine for you now. Yeah. I mean, is that you know what I mean? Is it? It's the first time I've had the feeling of of uh, 
you know, like what I would consider a band since, you know. I mean, I've had a blast with all this other stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I've definitely learned a lot and I've played with some great people and this and that. But I haven't had that kind of thing where you walk in a room with a, all your guys and the camaraderie is such that everybody's real comfortable and then, um, and then you all just are so in sync as players together and have that. There's no real arguing. There wasn't. On. There was, was no pretty real ego problems. You know, it's a very egonomical band, <laughs> you know, especially for who everybody is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ideas just come like that, you know, when we're together. So that has a certain kind of energy to it. That just what when we started working on on writing songs, it was like we never even looked back. It was like so into it. Mm -hmm. So the record, I'm just real excited. I, I have a, a copy of. The mixes in my car, and so, like, I have a, a, a five a five disc player in the mm -hmm. car, and there's a bunch of other shit in there, and I'll be listening to like the faces I was talking yesterday, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever else inside, and then all of a sudden it'll switch over to our record. Yeah, and it's really compelling. It makes me want to listen to it. Although I try to avoid actually listening to it too often. But as soon as it comes on, it's very compelling to me. And there's uh, uh, a mix of Gotten It Right in there, which is. Uh, just comes on. All right, Dave. I'll talk to you later. That comes on and it just sounds really cool. So yeah. I'm just happy that uh, we got to do our thing, just totally mm -hmm. the way that we wanted to do it, and it was totally our sound and our, you know. I mean, the, the cool thing about this band is we put it all together. We went through all the fucking bullshit. We had no fucking support or even faith in it from the very beginning. Everybody thought it was a complete fucking failure waiting to happen. And so at this point, we actually managed to do the record and we're going on from there. So it's a huge feeling of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. you know, it reminds me a lot of the old days. Yeah, exactly. So that's exciting in and of itself. Goodbye. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank man. you it's very much. Pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Pleasure. You're freaking great. Great. What time? Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're out of here. No, no, I'm just thinking about traffic. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna. Yeah, I appreciate you. You know, we're. Uh, you know, good. but yeah, a couple last questions and we'll go. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I know what you're saying. The Faces record comes on, then your record comes on, and. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, the perfect thing was is for you to get that feeling because you're talking about the Faces box set and we know what that means to us. Mm -hmm. is, you know, but, but for you to hear your own music and, and have that kind of that showing up your spine like you did when you heard like the first Zeppelin record yeah. or the first pipe, I mean that... The most, the, the most, ex the thing about it, I guess, because I hadn't really talked about this, so I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't really know exactly how to put it, but when, when I, when I, when there was a listening party over there, I sort of avoided it, like the, the full pressure of sat, standing there while everybody was listening I to saw it. You, yeah. But I've had a, a, the, a chance to listen to it a couple times with people around, like at the record company and so on. And the thing is, it's so original sounding, and it sounds so, it sounds so like done like something mm -hmm. some, like a real band and a real right, record and right. it sounds so more you know like original it's got its own sound mm -hmm. and everybody's playing it's just like wow you know yeah absolutely like, and the same no, thing in my car it just sounds like it's its own like, it's its own thing you're right absolutely that's great man i have one last question because they're doing a special issue on guitar riffs mm -hmm. so what is your favorite guitar riff and what song of all time of all time yeah can you pick one fuck I want to say fucking uh, the Jeff Beck group, um, the one with the that starts off uh, with the Wawa pedal slide thing. That Jeff Ain't superstitious. No. Oh wow! Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Really, that lit. That is just amazing. why. It's just because the the sound of it is fucking um, awesome. There's that song, and there's fucking. Can't You Hear Me Knocking, the original Stones version of that, because I've heard a couple people play that song. Um, that That is another one. These are right off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. I could go on for days. You know? Wow, it's so amazing you would pick those, because I remember you talking yesterday about Beck being kind of one of the guys who could really play, but, but he still kind of had that emotion for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I no, mean, well, Beck's one of the most amazing guitar players ever, I, I, when it comes to just rock and roll guitar. He, he is He's I, so much... Like, I think Jimmy Page put it best, when he's on this, he's the best there is. Because mm -hmm. I mean, when he really goes for it, um, Jeff has got so much control of the guitar, it's not even fucking funny. I mean, <laughs> have you ever met him? Or yeah, yeah, I've played with him before. 
Did you really? Yeah. Actually, we, you we, jammed with him? We jammed. Uh, he came out and jammed with Guns N' Roses uh, in France one time. Wow. And and, uh, and Aerosmith was there and Lenny Kravitz. And Jeff oh, really? Beck. But Jeff Beck came to Soundcheck and blew his ears out and didn't do the actual gig that night. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Uh, I remember but it was that. great playing, standing on stage with him and Joe, <laughs> like going through riffs. But I've... Um, I've uh, hung out with Jeff a bunch of times, and he's just real organic player. And mm -hmm. He can pull some sounds out of your guitar that just... That's the thing about that particular song, Superstitious, is it's just the sound that he gets is not something you go, oh, well, this is done with this and that and the yeah. other. You can put the equipment together and mm -hmm. line it all up, mm -hmm. but at the same time, just to, to get that fucking tone and, and just the nuances of, for every note. So that's exactly. a really great one. And, and can you hear me knocking? You're only asking for one, but can you hear me knocking? Is as simple as it is, doesn't sound like what it is. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, I'm just fucking back in the no. saddles a good one. I keep going. <laughs> That's great, man. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. All right, now, listen. I'm so